Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will continue on with predictive analytics. In the previous video, we looked at simple linear regression. The simple linear regression model predicts the target variable using one independent variable. It is a machine learning algorithm and it is often used to find relationship between the target and the independent variables. We will expand on it today and see how to use multiple linear regression, also known as multiple regression. We use multiple regression when one variable in a data set is not sufficient to create a good model and to make accurate predictions. In this video, we will go over multiple regression. If you haven't seen the first video, this will be a good time to pause and check it out. Link is in the description below. Before we attempt to build a model using Python, we need to consider a few things. Adding more variable isn't always helpful because the model may overfit and it may become too complicated. Also, the trained model doesn't generalize with the new data and it only works on the trained data. Second, outlier and skewness in the data may impact the accuracy of predictions. Therefore, we must address these issues prior to building a model. Third, we must select the appropriate variables to build the best model. This process of selecting variables is called feature selection. We will discuss and address these points with practical examples. Let's dive into the Jupyter Notebook and see how we build a linear regression model with Python. Complete notebook along with the dataset is available on GitHub. Link is in the description below. As usual, at the top, I am importing the required libraries. Make sure you have these libraries installed prior to running this code. You can install the libraries within the Jupyter Notebook with the pip command, or you can launch the command prompt and issue a pip command along with the library to install those libraries. First, we'll read the data and convert it to a pandas data frame with pandas read CSV method. I am going to run this cell with the keyboard shortcut shift plus enter or you can select the cell and click the run button on the menu above. Our data set looks like this. This is a Kegel data set consists of uh, roughly 1400 rows with 81 property attributes. The target variable in this data set is sales price. The goal is to use exploratory data analysis or EDA. By the way, if you're not familiar with EDA, then check out my video on EDA, link is in the description below. It will help us with the data cleansing process and uh, pre-process the data before we start on building the actual model. Let's begin with the EDA process. We can check how many observations and columns we have in our data frame by calling the shape function. As before, we have about 1400 rows and 81 columns. Let's check for null values in the data set using isNA function. There are a lot of missing values in our data set and we'll have to remove these. We can call the describe method to show the average sale price of a house, which is close to 180, with most of the values falling within the range of 34,000 to 755,000. We can use the correlation to select appropriate features for our model. Next step is to show the relationship between the columns to examine the correlation between the features and the target. The top correlated feature to sales price are the overall quality score, followed by above ground living area, which is about 71%, and garage area, 64%, and the number of car garage, which is 62%. We also have the least correlated features. We can simply drop these from the data set. Let's plot these variables individually against sales price in a scatter plot to check the strength of the relationship and to check for outliers. Outliers can affect the regression model by pulling the estimated regression line away from its true position. First, we will showcase the relationship between above ground living area we can see as the above ground living area increases, so does the sales price. 
However, after 4000, there are a few outliers. Uh, the above ground living area all the way on the right and the sales price is down. And also there are a few data points at the very top. Uh, so these are outliers and we will remove these. Also looking at the chart for the garage area, we can see that there are a few outliers after the threshold of 1200. So we'll have to remove these as well. I covered uh, detection and removal of outliers in my EDA tutorial in detail. So if you need more information, feel free to check that video out. Let's check the data distribution with a density plot. I am going to plot density plot from Seaborn and I give it the sales price column. And uh, as we can see that our data point seems to have a positive skew. As we see, there's a long tail on the right and uh, that most of the distribution seems to be on the left side of the mean. So we will need to address this issue as well. Let's move on to the data preparation stage. In the data preparation steps, we will remove outliers, transform, and encode the data. In this section, the data is prepared to make it more suitable for building and training the machine learning model. First, I'll remove the observed outliers. In the above living ground, values over 4000s are outliers, so I am going to go ahead and remove that. Similarly, we observed that in the garage area, Anything above 1200, there are outliers, so we can remove those values as well. We will remove the missing values now. We can simply draw the columns where the percentage of nulls is greater than 80%. Let's convert the categorical values to numeric. This technique is called label encoding. Label encoding simply means converting each categorical value to a numeric. For example, the building type column contains different values such as single family, two family, duplex, and townhouse. We can respectively convert these to 0, 1, 2, and 3. Our data set still has NAN values. We can handle NAN values in many ways, whether to fill these with mean or median. One way to fill missing values is to assign these missing values according to their probability of occurrence in the data set. Uh, for example, uh, let's say we have eight uh, rows in our data set, two are NAN values, and we have uh, three values of 1900, and two values of 1500, and one value of 1300. So the price of uh, 1900 has 50% of probability of occurring in the data set, and the 1500 has 33%. So the 1900 has the highest probability of being picked in an effort to fill missing values. Next, we apply a log transformation to normalize the distribution of data. We want the skewness as close to zero as possible. The linear model works better on a normalized data set. We are looking to work with features that have a normal-like distribution. I'll go ahead and plot the density plot again to check the skewness. As we can see, the density plot resemble closely to a normal distribution. This means we can move ahead with our modeling and use this data to make predictions. Let's begin with the modeling steps. To train the regression model, we need to first split the data into an X list that contains the feature and a Y list that contains the target variable. In this case, it's the sales price. We split the data into training and a testing set using scikit-learn train test split function. We are using 80% of the data for training and 20% for testing. Train test split returns four objects. First is Xtrain. This is the subset of our feature used for training. And then we have Xtest. We will use this to test the model. And then we have the Ytrain. This is the target variable, sales price. And this corresponds to Xtrain. Last but not the least, we have the Ytest. And this is the target variable, uh, which correspond to the Xtest and we will use this to test the model. Now we will import the linear regression class, create an object of this class, which is the linear regression model. Then using the fit method to fit the model to the data set. This ingests the data set for the model to study the data and learn from it. We can check the accuracy of the prediction with the help of score function. In this case, we get an accuracy of 90%, which is very good. Let's use this model to make predictions. 
I will select the first row from the test data set. This is the list of features and we will supply this to model.predict function and it will give us the predicted value. This is the log of sale price. So in order to get the actual number, we are going to use expm1 from numpy to convert this to the actual sales price. expm is the inverse of the log function. Let's see the actual value for this index of 1040. So I'll print out the actual data frame and uh, filter out this index with ilog. So the actual price is 155,000. So the predicted value is pretty close. We can compare the model prediction against the actual values. For this, we can plot a line for actual sale and then plot another line for the predicted values. The original values are in red and predicted values are in blue. The model does a fairly good job of estimation as we can see that the line curves are matching the actual sales and the prediction follow the similar pattern. We can consolidate this model with the top five or top eight features and present this in a web application. In the example on the screen, I have a streamlit application where we have the user input on the left and uh, then those inputs are displayed in a data frame and then based on the user input, model prediction is displayed there. So as we are selecting different uh, inputs or we are changing the values of the input, our predicted price is changing. Once the model is built, we can export it, use it in other applications to make predictions. If there's interest in building a Streamlit application based on the model we have generated, uh, maybe I'll do a video down the line, but this is all for now. I hope you found this session useful. If you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe. Post any questions that you may have. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video.